Now, we kind of talked a little bit about some of the other draft picks. You, you mentioned A.J. Dillon a little bit. You talked about Jose, is it Jose DeGuara? Jose DeGuara? Jo Josiah, DeGuara. Josiah DeGuara. I'm sorry about that. Josiah DeGuara, Kamal Martin. We drafted three offensive linemen. Vernon Scott. So I just want to kind of get your thoughts on some of these picks. I'm looking at our team, and it's it's definitely moving to a, towards a Matt Floor friendly offense. You know, Matt Lafleur, even when he was back in Tennessee and back with the Rams, it was a lot of two tight end sets, a lot of running backs, a lot of play action. And I gotta be honest with you. I think that Matt LaFleur looked at the 49ers tape and said, hey, you know, we can have all the wide receivers in the world, but if we can't block the 49ers, then what what good is my play calling? Now, are these three offensive linemen we draft going to be the game changers we need? I don't know. I don't expect them to be. I think that we drafted some of these offensive linemen more so for depth because in the past, you know, when Brian Bulaga goes down, when TJ Lang was on the team, he was constantly hurt. We didn't always have the great replacements. We, we kind of thought Jason Spriggs was going to be that guy. He did not pan out. He's not even on the team anymore. So I understand going offensive line for depth. I'm never going to knock too many offensive line picks. Kamal Martin seems like a sleeper pick. Um, We got him in the fifth round. Now, he is pretty raw. You talked about in your videos how he's more of a north and south type of linebacker where he's going to, you know, if he's running vertically at you, he's, he's going to be pretty good. I think that. I think that's the case. But if he's, you know, moved around, you know, east to west, if he has to cover more shifty tight ends and run and running backs and wide receivers, then you might get into some trouble. I think that he's going to be more of a first and second down linebacker, kind of like you said in your video. DeGuara has the potential. He's very productive at uh, Cincinnati. So there is some potential there. But, again, I would have liked to have maybe had a wide receiver. But either way, you know, if he – Turns out to be a very good tight end. He and Jay Sternberg can, can do some good things. And at first, I didn't like the A.J. Dillon pick. But at the same time, the more I think about it, I actually kind of like it. And I'll tell you why. Aaron Jones is a great running back. We know that. But we have that bruiser now to back him up potentially. And again, we're, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Aaron Jones is a free agent in a couple years. Are we going to pay Aaron Jones a bunch of money? We don't know. So we have a solid running back at A.J. Dillon that was very productive at Boston College. Um, he was, he's very powerful. He's a bruiser. And I think that he's going to be a great threat in the red zone. He, we would have really liked to have had A.J. Dillon in that Philadelphia Eagles game in week number four when we couldn't punch the ball in for, on the one-yard line. But either way, I think that the A.J. Dillon pick is a sleeper pick. I would have preferred a wide receiver. I'm more so about surrounding your quarterback with weapons as opposed to running the football ton. But again, hey, it won us 13 games this past year. You know, you're not relying on Aaron Rodgers as much. So I just want to kind of go a little bit more in, into detail about these draft picks. What are your thoughts? What are some of your favorite picks? And what are some picks that you that kind of have you in questions outside the Jordan Love pick potentially? Well, I think the DeGuerra pick was the most head-scratching for me um, just because, you know, to, to use a third-round pick on him, I was like, okay, again, like the, the where we picked him, I wasn't the biggest fan of. Um, the A.J. Dillon pick, you know, it does make sense because, I mean, listen, we are going to love that pick for the later half of our season when we're playing a lot of home games in the winter in Lambeau. We are absolutely going to love that pick. And you were talking about Aaron Jones in a few years. He's a free agent next year, and he scored 16 touchdowns uh, on the ground this year. They, like, if he replicates that, we are not going to be able to pay him. No. You know, look at what Christian McCaffrey just got, and considering our cap space, and starting next year, you know, not only the free agents that I mentioned and the fact that we need to re-sign Kenny Clark, Aaron Rodgers' cap starts hitting really bad. Then you start to see other guys like the Smith brothers, their caps start hitting really bad. So, like, obviously there's supposed to be a big jump in the cap space next year, but that's up in the air because of COVID. And if we can't have fans in the stands, that's going to dramatically impact the cap. And so you look at this, and, and look especially at Aaron Jones, and I love Aaron Jones, and I have wanted to utilize him the way that he was utilized in some games last year, how we've been through the entire season. Now, he's had, had injury issues for the first two years of his career, but Aaron Jones, which, by the way, again, was a fifth-round pick, and you were talking about, you know, offensive linemen, too. Even, like, Corey Lindsley was a fifth-round pick. You know, there is 100% value in some of those later picks, because, again, it's just a crapshoot. Nobody knows. But on top of that, you know, the A.J. Dillon one makes sense for me because I think that he's a guy that not only can be utilized now on a rotational basis, but 
But I think he's also going to be used as a, oh crap, we can't afford Aaron Jones. Good. We are still have a number one running back right now because that seems to be like the most likely scenario. I, I hate to say it. I don't think Aaron Jones is staying as a Packer next year unless like, you know, the guy gets hurt and takes a lesser contract, which I don't want either. You know, it, it's just a matter of, you know, there's only so much money to go around, and especially if the COVID thing uh, ruins the season. So that's a big problem. For the other picks, um, I mean, again, I'm glad we addressed inside linebacker. You know, I'm, I'm happy with the Kamal Martin. We game. got someone. We, we need depth, at least. Yeah, we need somebody there. And, you know, put the body there. I think out of the offensive linemen, I like Runyon the best. Um, he seems to be the most polished, even though I think he needs to be developed. But, you know, we also got guys like Hanson, too, because Corey Lindsley is another free agent next year. I don't know if he's going to get another contract. Which, by the way, Corey Lindsley is one of the most, if not the most underrated player on that team. The guy is always healthy. The guy is always 100%. Good, um, and, and he really doesn't get any, really, that recognition. And then he would be a big loss. Him and Bakhtiari would be a major, major loss for this team. Because Bakhtiari is one of the best left tackles in the league. And, you know, that, that's the thing. I think next year... I can almost guarantee that we are going offensive tackle within the first two and maybe three picks um, in the first, second, or third round because we're going to need it. We're going to need the depth. We need to need a right tackle because Wagner is going to need to be replaced, and we're going to have to maybe potentially replace Bakhtiari at left tackle. You know, and I think that that's uh, you know that's a scary thought, but you know when you have a good offensive line, you you don't appreciate it, you take it for granted, but you know. Trust me, you know when you have a bad offensive line. because that Oh, yeah, you cannot hide that thing. Offense. You can't hide it. You can't hide it. No, I mean, look at the Seahawks. The Seahawks, you know, are one of those teams that Russell Wilson has not had a good offensive line like his entire career. And the guy gets slammed for it. Look at Matthew Stafford. gets sacked and injured all the time. You know when you don't have it. And we've had terrible offensive lines before. You know, there's yep. a reason we had to go Brian Mulaga in the first round. Ma- you know, Marshall Newhouse, I, I did not like that yeah. pick. Yeah. I mean, but again, like, Rodgers got a fuse in the beginning. Or Derek Sherrod, yeah, he got a fuse in, you know, when he first started. And again, like, you know, they, they, they cleaned it up a little bit, thankfully. And mm-hmm. they got a little bit of offensive line. But we've had a consistent offensive line. Now, again, we've had injuries over the years. Um, so I don't hate the run of offensive lines that we uh, as offensive linemen that we got in the sixth round do I think it might be too late sure but even if one of those guys hits and turns into the next Corey Lindsley or David Bakhtiari who we got in the fourth I mean like I'm good with that like I, I'm, I'm totally good there because when you get to the sixth and seventh round it's literally throwing a dart at the wall and hoping you hit something yeah and I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, like you said, the offensive line is definitely an issue that just cannot be hidden. I mean, look at the Cleveland Browns this past year. Had all these weapons, Oda Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry, Najoku, bad offensive line, didn't matter. Look at the Falcons. They had a, they had a lot of great weapons. The offensive line was bad, and it affected their team. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I currently am a freshman there right now. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows. Or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day and I'm out.